and support for the Iranian people. And now I have the honor of introducing Javid Rahman, who is going to join us uh, through Zoom. Video. Video. Yes, so we recorded video. Uh, Javid Rahman is the third special envoy on the situation of human rights in the Islamic Republic of Iran since uh, re-establishment of the mandate. Mr. Rahman is a human rights lawyer and professor. Uh, he teaches human rights law and Islamic Islamic law and uh, continues to publish extensively in the subject of international human human rights law. Please welcome Mr. Chavi Rahman. I thank you for this invitation for me to speak to you in my capacity as a United Nations Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Since September 2022, the brave people of Iran have been facing the worst forms of violations of human rights. Ethnic, linguistic and religious minorities continue to suffer from systematic and systemic persecution, targeting and harassment. Women and girls of Iran are targeted with the most serious assault on their fundamental human rights and human dignity. The morality police, the cause of much detestation and aggravation, has lately been redeployed, with women and girls being confronted, detained, and harassed. These policies are intended to further violate women's rights and their dignity by attempts to enforce hijab. As you know, the death in custody of the morality police of Gina Masanini on 16th of September 2022 unleashed one of the strongest waves of protests and civil unrest Iran has seen during the past four decades. She was arrested for allegedly failing to comply with Iran's strict rules on women's dress by wearing an improper hijab. The death in custody of Gina Masanini is unfortunately a tragic reflection of the violence against girls and women in, in Iran. In her case, there are clear implications with an ethnic and religious dimension as well. However, the law of enforced hijab and the manner of its enforcement by state authorities is emblematic of the violence, brutality, and the violation of fundamental human rights and human dignity of girls and women of Iran. The death in custody of Gina Masa Amini resulted in spontaneous protests, which were led by women and the youth of Iran under the banner of Zan Zindagi Azadi, which means women, life, freedom. These protests quickly transformed into nationwide protests, spreading to 160 cities and all 31 provinces of Iran, with people from every community, girls, women, boys, men and children, and people from all ethnic and religious backgrounds joining these protests. Unfortunately, there has been a brutal response of the Iranian authorities to these protests. It is estimated that the use of lethal force by security forces has led to the death of at least 537 persons, including at least 68 children. Iranian authorities tried to shut down all avenues of freedom of expression, disrupting internet and censoring social media platforms. I am deeply disturbed at the reports of threats, arrests and, and imprisonments of journalists for their critical and independent reporting, including in the context of the protests and indeed the subsequent suspected school poisoning affecting the health of the, of the thousands of schoolgirls in Iran. I'm absolutely horrified, shocked and outraged that despite appeals by the international community, including by my own mandate, Iranian authorities have thus far executed at least seven persons associated with protests after arbitrary, summary and sham trials which violated the right to fair trial and due process rights. These summary executions are the symbols of a state ready to use all means to instill fear and to quash protests. I'm very concerned that several other individuals face charges that carry the death penalty. I'm alarmed at the reports of targeting and victimization of ethnic, linguistic and religious minorities. It was tragic to note that ethnic and religious minorities who have suffered 
decades of systematic and systemic discrimination and persecution have been disproportionately impacted in the current wave of repression. There has been gross overrepresentation of ethnic and religious minorities in killings of the protesters that started since September 2022. Over half of the total number of persons killed since the start of the protests are Balochis and the Kurds. The constitutionally non-recognized religious minorities, in particular the Baha'is, are subjected to increasing repression and persecution. So what about investigations and establishing accountability for serious violations of human rights? Unfortunately, none of that has happened at the domestic level in Iran. There has been a governmental failure to conduct any independent, impartial and transparent investigations uh, into these murderous acts, killings, and brutality, and to hold the perpetrators accountable. I call upon the Islamic Republic of Iran to address systematic impunity by establishing a system of accountability in accordance with international law, including constitutional, legislative, and administrative reforms, as well as ensuring the complete independence of the judiciary and also to ensure effective remedies for victims of human rights violations. Now to the other deeply disturbing situation. Have there been any lessons learned from this tragedy of last year and indeed the tragedies emerging from the deaths of hundreds of women, men and children? The short answer is no. Iranian state laws and practices have unfortunately come full circle as I mentioned earlier, the morality police is back on the streets of Iran. The currently proposed legislation by the Iranian authorities is reinforcing further repression against women and girls. In highlighting my grave concerns, along with some of my special procedures colleagues, we issued a press release just last week on the 1st of September in which we noted that this proposed, that this proposed law, and I quote here, that this proposed law could be described as a form of gender apartheid as authorities appear to be governing through systemic discrimination with the intention of suppressing women and girls into total submission." End of quotation. Women and girls suffer from all forms of serious and perpetual discrimination both in their private as well as their public lives. I've highlighted my various concerns in my previous reports to the UN General Assembly and to the UN Human Rights Council and my key recommendations have included asking the Iranian authorities to repeal existing gender discriminatory laws including regulations that impose mandatory dress codes to dismantle the morality police and to introduce laws and policies to ensure complete equality for women and girls in public affairs. I thank you.